Hi again, everyone. Uh, so out of respect for everyone's time, we're going to begin and perhaps there may be a few others who will join us shortly. Uh, again, my name is Sean Woodhead and I'm the Program Manager of Blockchain Development at York University. So the structure of this information session is based on what I have seen to be some of the most pressing questions that people have about this program, as well as our other digital technology programs that are delivered in the school. Uh, so I've laid this session out in a way that'll first go through a description of what the labor market looks like in Toronto for developers, as well as specifically for blockchain developers. And then we'll move into just a quick description of what the trajectory into uh, or through the labor market would look like after completion of the certificate in blockchain development. And then from there, uh, we'll change gears a bit by uh, going through a more detailed description of the program. Uh, and, then we'll, and then we'll end with uh, any questions that this group might have. And just before we get into that, uh, just a couple quick notes about the person that you're listening to today. Uh, so, as I said before, my name is Sean Woodhead. I'm the Program Manager for Blockchain Development. I'm also the Program Manager for a series of other digital technology programs that are delivered in our school. Uh, I've been with the School of Continuing Studies since 2017, and my entire career has been spent in the Ontario College and University sectors. So with that, I bring to this program ample experience in program management. Now, education-wise, I did my Master's of Education at the University of Toronto, and I'm currently working on my PhD in education at York University. Uh, also, and specific to blockchain, I'm the academic liaison for the Canadian Blockchain Olympiad. The Canadian Blockchain Olympiad is essentially a national competition where we bring aspiring and entry-level blockchain developers together to compete. And then the winners of that competition then go to, in most years, they go to Hong Kong for an international competition. This past year, it was done online, but typically uh, they, go to, they go to Hong Kong to, to compete interna uh, internationally. And the winners of the Canadian Olympiad, they're there representing Canada, of course. Uh, so uh, across our professional programs, I'm a strong believer that in programs such as the Certificate in Blockchain Development, that we really do need to have a curriculum that is tied to very clear and precise career-related goals of the students. Uh, so I'm going to go a bit deeper, as I mentioned later in this session, around how we've tried to structure this curriculum so that it would correspond very well with what would be the career-related uh, goals and the, the technical skills that you would be seeking to obtain in a highly technical program such as blockchain development. So the labor market, what does it look like? Um, and this comes, of course, with the caveat that 2020 uh, was certainly a strange year. It was a year of disruption, some of those disruptions being permanent, some of those only being temporary. Uh, and what we see across a lot of digital technology occupations is that uh, they were certainly affected less than in uh, some other occupations. Now, outside of the, the COVID-19 matter, CBRE is reported, Toronto is the fastest growing tech community in the world. And it is the number three tech community in North America. And with being a growing tech hub comes a need for a wide variety of technical roles and those including software developers and blockchain developers. Now we've seen a, we've seen a substantial increase in the demand for blockchain developers in this space. Uh, so Randstad, which is a multinational human resource consulting firm, they've declared that blockchain is uh, among the top 10 emerging fields in Toronto. And we've also seen a 374% increase in demand for blockchain developers. Now, uh, to put this into the perspective of how large is the developer community in Toronto, while I don't have data to share with you on how many 
uh, fully employed developers there are in Toronto right now. Um, an interesting data point that we can still look to to get some sense of how large the community is, is well, what are the number of new job postings for developers in Toronto? Uh, so in the past year, there's been nearly 8,000 new job postings uh, for developers with an average salary of $87,000. Um, the, the exact number of new job postings is 7,778. Uh, so this is a massive number of new job postings for an occupation in the city. Uh, now, going back to blockchain, uh, blockchain is still in early adoption, no doubt about it. And in the last few years, there had been a, a bit of a craze or a bit of a fad in many organizations saying that they need blockchain, they need blockchain. And I would say that for some of those organizations, they were all on board because of the fad, but they didn't, they weren't really discerning. They didn't really know how they were going to incorporate blockchain to uh, blockchain tech into their uh, into their infrastructure. Now, I would say that that stage has mostly now passed us. And in the last uh, couple years, businesses have become a lot more discerning. Um, they become a lot more discerning about the practical use of blockchain for their businesses. And uh, one observation that I've made that also reiterates that or supports that uh, perspective of mine is that for, um, for management consulting, uh, a lot of management consulting uh, in, or personnel that I've spoken with, they said that they're spending less time uh, than they had been a few years on um, on pr on providing guidance on the use of blockchain. But we do know that it's here to stay. So what I really like for um, for those who are planning on now coming into blockchain development, then they have the faith now that uh, that. It's not a fad that there is a steady foundation for employment and growth and employment in this field. Um, so it's certainly a lot less volatile than it had been a couple of years ago. So what I had done in advance of today's session, I went into a, a platform called Burning Glass Labor Insights. Burning Glass Labor Insights offers an aggregate of job postings across Canada, and I'm able to filter and create subgroups based on a series of different search parameters. So what I looked at in advance of today's session was what are, uh, in this aggregate, what are the, uh, the things that employers are looking for when they are, uh, when they're hiring blockchain developers? And uh, the parameters that I used to define a blockchain developer were that blockchain was a noted skill and I excluded any uh, job titles uh, or anything, any jobs that were coded to something that uh, would be non-technical. And what I found in the, in the search results was largely this, that um, they are looking for software development experience and not necessarily blockchain development experience. Uh, they are looking for uh, skills and knowledge, though, that would be transferable into blockchain development. Uh, they are looking for, uh, they're largely looking for uh, experience with JavaScript, with Java, and with Python. Now, 69% uh, of the national job postings that I was able to grab through Burning Glass Labor Insights, 69% uh, of those job postings uh, were looking for five years of software development experience or less. So with this in mind, and, and it really does align well with uh, a lot of the research that we had done leading up to development of this program and in designing the curriculum, uh, I, would, I think it's important for me to share with, with those that are on today's information session, why did we launch this program? Uh, because certainly there's plenty of other programs that we could have spent our time on where um, where it would have been easier, it would have been less niche. Um, but if you look across, uh, if you look across our other programs, 
you may notice that we have a lot of programs that do sit at the forefront of technology. And our school does have a commitment to supporting the future of work. And, uh, and so with our programs, we aim to address these areas of high skills demand, and even when it may still be in early adoption phase. So early in our process of development, what we do is we engage with several industry leaders and with hiring managers to get a sense of what they're looking for in graduates. And in this case, then what would they be looking for uh, of our graduate if they were going to hire them on as a blockchain developer? This is a crucial step to us, ensuring that our program graduates students with the proper skill set to succeed and thrive in the future of work that I just spoke about. Um, our program is only going to be as strong as the success of its graduates. So what this also means is that even though we do want to high, uh, we want to graduate um, highly, highly technically skilled graduates, we also want to support the development of what we would refer to as a top of the T graduate. So what I mean by a top of the T graduate is that there is a lot of depth to their technical skills, but we also aim for them to be well-rounded. We want them to not just graduate with the tech skills, but also with the cross-functional skills or the soft skills that are needed in the workplace. So these vary from program to program, and they would include skills such as active listening, persuasion, and empathy. So when we're designing our curriculum, we are very focused on the technical knowledge, the technical skill, and we're also searching for ways to help develop and assess the ability of those cross-functional skills of our students. Um, and then perhaps the last reason that I could share with why we decided to launch this program is that uh, this is the first and only Canadian university to offer this type of, uh, to offer a, a blockchain program such as this. And so with us, want, with us really being a leader in uh, continuing education in Canada, it is very important for us uh, to find these opportunities to be the first to market, to then set the bar really high in, in developing and delivering uh, technical programs such as certificate and blockchain development. So now moving into uh, some specifics about the program. Um, there's a wide variety of tools and applications that are uh, introduced in this program. Uh, and I've listed those up on the screen here. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is, uh, this is a list of some of those. And uh, in our program, we do have, uh, we, we've split the focus between public and private blockchain. And what you may find when you're, when you're uh, as you've been searching for educational programs, uh, there is a lot of attention that some programs have applied to, pu to public blockchain and many to cryptocurrency. And with where Bitcoin's at right now, then I can appreciate why there's a lot of attention on, uh, on cryptocurrency. Uh, this program is much more than that. And this program has brought in uh, some focus on private blockchain and specifically because a lot of graduates who are looking for work in blockchain development will be finding themselves at some point working within the context of enterprise. So now going down to the course level. So you'll see up on the screen here, the four courses that make up the, this intensive format of the certificate in blockchain development. So we've designed the program so that each course ladders to the next and it's scaffolded so that what you learn in the first course builds, uh, helps support your learning in the second course and the third course, and then everything culminates into that final blockchain development capstone course. So with the first course, uh, this course really covers the fundamentals of blockchain technology. And um, even in the first course, students are already uh, working on practical projects. So, uh, students will already be, be building stuff in the first course. Now, moving into the second course, 
Um, this has more of a public blockchain focus. And this is where we're introducing students to Ethereum. And in this, and in this course, uh, students are designing a, a smart contract, and then they'll be developing and deploying their own uh, decentralized application. Now, in the third course, this is the private blockchain course. This is where students will be learning the fundamentals of enterprise decentralized applications, and then also the integration of that decentralized application into enterprise systems. So in this course, uh, this is where students are going to be introduced to Hyperledger Fabric, and then among other tools and applications, of course. Now, in the final course, uh, this is where students are working end-to-end -end on a blockchain project. And in this course, uh, students do get a choice. If students wish to be paired up with a business, we will pair those students up with businesses. If students wish to not work with a business, and instead, if they want to work, if they're working on their own, uh, their own startup, or if they are working, uh, or if they just want to work independently otherwise, then that's fine too. And so, I just want to highlight really quickly the uh, some of the benefits of having a capstone course. We we consciously put a capstone course at the end of this program because we knew just how much value that offers to students. Right now, it is rare for software developers to be able to acquire blockchain-specific experience in an organization. So what one of the benefits that we're hoping uh, students will, or that individuals will, um, will seek out through our program is the ability to work with a business uh, on the development of blockchain within within their uh, within their organization, and so this could have uh, benefits in one of two ways. So for those who are working as a developer right now for an organization and they have every intention of staying there, but that organization is hoping to. Uh, integrate blockchain tech into uh, into their enterprise at some point, then being able to acquire this rare experience can still be let that can be leveraged for then going back within the organization to then be leading uh, to be leading development. And then for those who are looking at making a a career change uh, or otherwise moving to a different employer, uh, then having this having this rare experience, uh, we would expect to be very helpful uh, during the selection process that that employer has, where they would then be considering you uh, for a blockchain developer role with that organization. So who's teaching the curriculum, you might wonder? Well, uh, we do have a, we have a fairly large instructional team and I've left, uh, I've left many of them off of this slide just because they're teaching in the full-time program, which has some more courses than in this certificate blockchain development. And that full-time program is designed more for, uh, for individuals who don't have software development experience. And I'll touch upon that again in just a minute. It's uh, another slide or two down. So with, uh, with this instructional team, uh, we have, I've, I've put the most recent edition first. Uh, so we have we have Govind, and uh, Govind is, uh, as I mentioned, he's the most recent addition to the team, and he's currently a lead developer for Virgil Systems in Toronto, as well as being an entrepreneur uh, who has uh, co-founded Data X One, which offers solutions for participants in um, in research to maintain ownership of their data and to get paid for its use. Uh, and then we next have we have Druvin. And Druvin's been helping organizations build new generation systems uh, for some time now. He is a software developer at a leading Toronto-based blockchain startup, and he quickly perceived the potential of decentralized systems, uh, and that motivated him to start exploring blockchain, uh, blockchain technology uh, since 2017. And in his in his role, he is he's doing a number of things, which is uh, it includes, but it's not limited to 
uh, writing clean, bug-free, and well-tested code, and mainly in React, React Native, and Node. Uh, and he has been actively contributing to open source blockchain projects of Ethereum and, uh, and other ecosystems. And then uh, lastly, Andy. Uh, Andy is a senior technology leader, and he's very passionate about developing innovative solutions using blockchain tech. With, uh, with over 15 years of experience in finance and fintech, Andy's now the CTO and co-founder of AquaNow. And AquaNow is a fast-growing fintech startup, which provides digital assets, trading platforms, and, uh, and infrastructure. And Andy is also the one who he is teaching the capstone course. So uh, on top of teaching in that course, what Andy's also doing is Andy's the one who is procuring the capstone projects that students will be working on near the end of this, uh, this program. So for the admission requirements, what should you have coming into the program? So what we, this is continuing education. So in continuing education, most of our programs are open enrollment. What that means is that anybody can register. Now, with that in mind, and as I've mentioned before, this is a highly technical program. So what I strongly recommend that for anyone who is considering this program, uh, they should have a high level of comfort with coding using uh, JavaScript. Now, if, um, if you do not have experience with JavaScript, but you do have a programming background using other languages, then, then sure, that's fine. And you can pick up JavaScript very quickly. Um, so we've had some other individuals who have considered the program. And uh, I would say like those that have, have experience with Java, with Python, et cetera, then yeah, they, they can definitely pick up JavaScript quickly. And we can also offer advice on which free or otherwise inexpensive learning resources are at your disposal to then just make sure that you're ready to go on day one of this program. Most importantly, uh, you should have software development experience. If you do not have software development experience, then I do not recommend that you come into this program yet. So what do you do if you don't have the experience? Well, I would say that there's at least two options that you can consider. The first option is this. If you're looking for what would be a part-time format, you could do the certificate in full stack web development. And this is a program that we've now been offering for a couple of years. It's very popular. And anecdotally, based on those that I've spoken with about the program, they really like it. If you complete the certificate in full stack web development, you would then be able to move fairly seamlessly into the certificate in blockchain development program. This would be a total of 10 courses. Now, keeping in mind that even though we do consider the certificate in blockchain development to be a part-time program, I just want to reiterate again, that this is an intensive format. And um, in a few minutes, I'm going to get into what an intensive format actually looks like. Um, and then for those of you who are in a position to consider a full-time program, then there's the postgraduate certificate in backend of blockchain development. And in that program, it's nine courses and the learning cadence is just it's a little bit more intense than with the part-time format so with a with a full-time program of nine courses then you would be taking uh you'd be taking classes in the evenings most weeks four days a week and with a one week break in between each course currently we offer the full-time program once a year and it's with a september start and with a may conclusion in terms of the program structure for this intensive format of the certificate in blockchain development, in terms of the pace, it is four months to complete four courses. And it starts on February 8th, ending May 20th. For the most part, there's a one week break in between each course for a bit of a breather. Classes are scheduled 
Mondays to Thursdays from 6.45 p.m. to 9.45 p.m. There are no classes that are on Fridays or on weekends. So what this means is that for those of you who are currently working full time, it is very possible for you to then work full time and then take class in the evenings. And in terms of learning supports, uh, this is not an exhaustive list of supports that I have up on here, but I want to list just what I consider to be the most important one. So uh, with blockchain development being an early adoption phase and with me being the one who's recruiting and selecting instructors, I can tell you firsthand that there are there are not a lot of individuals yet with the experience that I'm looking for in a high quality instructor. Nonetheless, we have been successful in finding instructors who have that experience that we seek. So each of them have great experience as blockchain developers and, and they also have experience in education and training. On top of that, we also have a robust amount of content in, the, in an online learning management system. So for those who are in the program, you are in class, as I had mentioned, on Mondays to Thursdays of each week. We also have put together a lot of content for your review and with some online, online activities and the like. And that's in our online, uh, that's in our learning management system called Moodle. And for those of you who are interested in a walkthrough of what the learning management system looks like, and then specifically what we've developed for curriculum in the learning management system for you to use, I'll be more than glad to do a walkthrough with you. And we could schedule that at some other time, perhaps this week or next week and I'll be providing my email address at the end. So the cost to enroll is uh, $6,799. And for those who have attended today, we do have a special promo code for you. And uh, it allows you to get $1,000 off of the program fee. And you can reach out to us for details or for the promo code if you're interested in registering. I've also put up on there the URL for the uh, certificate blockchain development webpage in case you haven't landed on that webpage yet. And as I've mentioned, it's a four course program and you can still enroll for winter 2021 with the, uh, with the program start being in February. Contact information. So for most of your questions, you'd be able to direct those to Michael Kasiba. He's the continuing studies advisor who's responsible for the certificate in blockchain development. And you can reach Mike at continue at yorku.ca. If you have made your decision, you want to register, and then you have some questions about what registration looks like, or if you're having some uh, issues actually getting registered for the program, no problem. Just reach out to the registration team. And their email is regses at yorku.ca. And then even though my contact information is not up on there, you're more than welcome to reach out to me as well. And again, my name is Sean Woodhead, and my email address is woodhead at yorku.ca. So that's W-O-O-D-H-E-A-D at yorku.ca. So that concludes the information that, uh, that I have for you for today's session. All of you for taking the time to, to join me for this walkthrough through the labor market and what the blockchain development program looks like. And we do have some time for questions. Okay, so um, while you're putting, we have two questions already and I'll also provide a few minutes for additional questions to come through. Uh, so one question is, what is the percentage of front end versus back end coding? So this program is focused uh, primarily on, on back end. Uh, I would say that ha coming in with some experience in both would be very helpful, but yes, context very much in back end. And then there's also a question about the postgraduate certificate in back end and blockchain development. Uh, and the question is if one does not have software development experience, should they take the full-time or the part-time program? 
So I just want to clarify, the curriculum looks different between the two programs. So we have a full-time program, which is a postgraduate certificate in backend and blockchain development. We have a part-time program, which is a certificate in blockchain development. So for the postgraduate certificate in backend and blockchain development, that is, that is an option that individuals would want to consider if they do not have so software development experience. And that program runs from September to May. The certificate in blockchain development is really for experienced developers. And that program, we, it, it, we call it part-time because it's only four months to complete. And with that said, as I had mentioned earlier, it is an intensive format. So week by week, it's, a, it's the same amount of work as what a full-time student would be doing. It's just over a much shorter period of time. So there's one question about if someone has taken a full stack development course and they have experience in blockchain, including the development of a decentralized application with Ethereum, would this be an appropriate course for them? And it's not enough information for me to provide a, a precise answer. Um, the reason being, I think it would be beneficial to go through and look at what other aspects of our courses were not covered through that experience. So I think that would actually be a great question to explore in a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So for the individual that has that question, I would suggest reaching out to me directly and then we can schedule a time to chat and investigate that further. Uh, just so that then I can provide you with a with an accurate answer. Uh, and again, my email address is woodhead at yorku.ca. There's also a question around what skills will we learn. I tried to cover at a high level back on the slide. Uh, here, let's go back. I did have a, a so sorry a slide where. Um, I did cover it at a pretty high level where you would be, I think, I admit, you need to make some inferences on what skills would you be developing to then do some of this work. What I could do is I could provide you with the list of learning outcomes for the program in a little bit more detail around what skills would be covered off in each of the courses. So if you would like that information, then you can reach out to me by email as well. And then I will, um, I'll flip that over to you, no problem. And we have another question about what the delivery format is for the, for the part-time program, what the delivery mode is for the postgraduate certificate. So the postgraduate certificate that uh, is currently in progress, which I know you're not asking about, but I'm just providing it for context. That's being delivered online. And it's being delivered uh, online right now because of um, the, the public health situation in Toronto and with, and with us just being asked to deliver uh, our programming online until further notice. I cannot give you an answer on what delivery will look like in fall 2021. It's a bit too early and it's going to depend entirely on the, on primarily two things. Um, one, it's going to, it's going to depend on what the federal government through IRCC advises as appropriate from a student visa perspective. Um, for bringing international students into, into Canada. And then more locally, uh, it'll also depend on the guidance that we receive from Toronto Public Health. So um, whether or not it will be delivered online or won't, again, too early to tell, but we are also set up uh, for online delivery, for online delivery to be done very well because that's how we've been doing it this, uh, this fall and winter for the students in that program. Okay, and uh, I believe I've answered all the questions. Thank all of you for coming today.
means a lot. I hope you learned a few things about the program and the labor market. And both Mike and myself were very happy to answer any other questions that you might have in advance of this program starting next month. All right, so uh, I'm going to finish this session now and also thank you for the nice comments that you've been sending. And I'm really happy that you found today's session to be useful. And uh, I look forward to welcoming many of you next month and, um, and also for um, adding me to LinkedIn. And yeah, very happy that you, uh, that you all found it very helpful. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Take care.